Hello, welcome to The Update. I'm Susie Thompson. A man has been refused bail, accused of torturing his young son on Brisbane's north side. The five-year-old was discovered in a critical condition, along with his siblings, aged six and eight, who were found locked in the garage, suffering extensive injuries. The 29-year-old man is facing 14 domestic violence offences, while his five-year-old son continues to fight for his life in hospital. Witnesses to a deadly boating crash south of Perth say they warned the vessel's skipper to slow down and turn its lights on but were ignored. Two women aged in their 50s were killed and a 47-year-old man seriously hurt when their boat hit a navigation marker on Saturday night. Nicole says another man was operating the vessel and took off shortly after the incident. My husband did could clearly see there was one guy lying down. It wasn't a big boat. There was no other people on the boat except the two males. My husband said, mate, where are the women? And he said, no, no, we're all on board. And my husband said, no, You're not all on board. The women are in the water. We need to find the women. Police are investigating. The New South Wales government is promising extra funding to expand electronic monitoring for people who commit domestic violence offences. If the coalition is re-elected on March 25, it will commit $20 million to make another 200 devices available to keep an eye on high-risk offenders. Minister for the Prevention of Domestic Violence, Natalie Ward, says it's about making sure victim survivors feel safe. Everyone, but particularly those who've already been subjected to domestic violence need to be able to feel safe enough to go about their lives, to go shopping, go to work, care for their children, knowing that someone's keeping an eye on the offender. Meantime, if Labor is elected, it has pledged $100 million in funding for women's health centres across New South Wales. The federal opposition is calling for a major intervention in Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. There's been an increase in crime in the town and the local mayor is urging the Prime Minister to send in federal police. Opposition leader Peter Dutton also wants alcohol bans to be reinstated. However, the Northern Territory's Chief Minister, Natasha Files, says she won't be backing race-based interventions to curb crime in the Alice. Briefly in overseas news, demonstrations have been held in 46 US states to protest the end of federal abortion rights. 200 marches have been staged on the 50th anniversary of the Roe v Wade court decision, which made abortion a constitutional right. And police in California are no closer to establishing a motive for the Lunar New Year's shootings. A 72-year-old gunman opened fire at a dance hall, killing 10 people. He was later found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. In sport, Novak Djokovic has blitzed Alex Dimonor in straight sets to move through to the Australian Open quarterfinals. Other winners last night, Andre Rublev in an enthralling five-setter against Holger Runa, while an All-American quarterfinals been set down with Ben Shelton and Tommy Paul winning through. And in the Big Bash League, the Sydney Sixers have been Beaten the Hurricanes by 24 runs. Steve Smith, a standout again for the Sixers, smashing 66 runs from 33 balls. We're peaking at the right time, I think, playing some really good cricket. Uh, I've only got one more game next week in Perth. Hopefully I can put on another good performance and, and send the team off with a with a chance to win the final at the SCG. In entertainment news, Tom Hanks has earned himself a Razzies nomination for his role in Elvis, nominated for Worst Supporting Actor, while the Marilyn Monroe biopic has earned eight Razzie nominations. And Spotify is the latest to swing the axe, announcing plans to lay off 6% of its staff. The audio streamer is eliminating nearly 600 roles while its chief content and advertising officer is leaving the business. And that's the latest from the Nova podcast team. We'll see you later on for another update. I'm Susie Thompson.